الربيع شوف شوف تم تسميتها تم الربيع عايز احتمال يافا كانت يافا هو فصارت تم الربيع يعني لك يا مروان رحت على يافا وشفتها وانبسطت فيها بس اصدقائي بحكي لكم يعني يافا اكيد اكيد مش يافا وبس يافا وحيفا وعكا والناصره وكل المدن الفلسطينيه اللي احتلت بال 48 رح ترجع لنا بيوم اصدقائي الاطفال والله يا مسافر شعلاني هالغيره نسقين بلادي حلويه ما شاء الله مي العصافه تحول عطبريه لا عكا وحيفا اللي معها بحرها لا تنسى الناصره القلعة العربية بشر بيساني برجعة أهلها اوعد اعتقدي انه في واحد فلسطيني سواء اللي بيقول بحل الدولتين او اللي بيقول غير ذلك انه ممكن ان يوافق على انه هذه المستوطنات ان تكون جزءا من اسرائيل وحيفا ويافا وعكا مش فلسطينية لا حيفا ويافا وعكا والنصرة فلسطينية غصبا عن الامريكان غصبا عن الاسرائيليين لكن نحن في مدارسنا نعلم ما يمني علينا ديننا وضميرنا بان القدسية عربية وان فلسطين من شمالها لجنوبها من نهر هي عربية فلسطينية إسلامية وستبقى كذلك رغم أنف هذا المحتل البعيد هي إسرائيل هي أرضنا إسرائيل أرضنا أرضنا 42 هي أرضنا هي فلسطين المحتلة 48 أرضنا فلسطين المحتلة هي حيفا يافا عكا هي أراضينا المحتلة أراضي 48 اللي احتلتها إسرائيل ب 48 احتلتها إسرائيل ب 48 هي أراضي فلسطينية رح تضلها فلسطينية وإن شاء الله رح ترجع لنا بيوم for several decades now, politicians, clerics and school teachers living in the areas known as the Gaza Strip, the West Bank and East Jerusalem have been teaching their children, teenagers and young adults that the whole of the land of Israel in fact belongs to the Arab people who are today known as the Palestinians. This claim is widely propagated throughout the Palestinian media and education system and further afield in Muslim-dominated countries in the Middle East. The claim goes on to assert that the Jewish people have no historic connection with Jerusalem and that they are in fact trying to Judaize the holy city and that the Jewish presence there is illegal. Moreover, this claim is now becoming widely believed among many in the Western world. So what historic and legal claim do the Palestinian Arabs have over Jerusalem and the land of Israel? Jewish writings dating back over 2,000 years found among the Dead Sea Scrolls confirm there was a historic Jewish presence here in Jerusalem well before the time of Christ. Archaeological sites such as this confirm that fact. Christian records confirm that a Jewish temple stood up there on what the Palestinians call Haram al-Sharif, or the Temple Mount, at the time of Christ. Jewish historical records show that Jerusalem was in fact the capital city of the people of Israel a thousand years before Christ. Extra-biblical records, for example, what is known as the Cyrus Cylinder from the ancient Persian Empire, which is now housed in the British Museum, confirm that King Cyrus gave permission for the Jews to return to their capital city, Jerusalem, to rebuild the temple that had been destroyed by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. These stone steps date back to the time of King Herod, and there are many other examples of Herodian structures across the Middle East. Even Islamic sources, such as this publication, dating back to 1924, when the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem was in charge of the Haram al-Sharif in the British Mandate period, acknowledges that there had once been a Jewish temple standing here, and these steps, these stone steps, lead up to it. In the year 70 AD, the Romans destroyed not only the temple, but the entire Jewish capital was destroyed too. The historian Josephus Flavius 
records that more than a million inhabitants of Jerusalem were killed and the rest were taken off to Rome as slaves. So how did the Jewish homeland, the land of Israel, come to be known as Palestine? Palestine is not even the original name of the land that is denominated Palestinian land. Palestine is not a Hebrew word, it's not an Arab word, it's a Roman word. That land was originally Eretz Israel. It took the name of Palestine under later occupations. The original uh, name is uh, Plishtim from the Bible, or Philistines. But they uh, were in the coastal area, basically nothing to do with uh, the name Palestine. Palestine was uh, reused as Palestine as we know it today by Hadrian when he occupied the country in 135 uh, following the Bar Kokhba revolt. He really wanted that uh, the, the Judea will be forgotten. And uh, that is the main reason why he changed the name to Palestina, to Palestine. The final Jewish rebellion against Rome in the early second century, known as the Bar Kokhba uprising, was brutally quashed by the Romans. Jews were barred from entering their ancient capital city, Jerusalem, until the fourth century. Even though most Jews had either been killed by the Romans or exiled and taken off as slaves, there were small Jewish communities scattered across other parts of the Jewish homeland. If it had not been for the diaspora, the vast majority of the population would have been Jewish. Uh, it was Christian before the Muslim armies invaded. Um, and gradually over the years, the Jews had gone mostly to Europe. Some had stayed behind and always been a Jewish presence. For example, there was a continuous Jewish community living in Hebron from the time of the Babylonian exile in the 6th century BC until the British expelled them in 1929. Other Jewish communities thrived for many centuries in places like Tiberias and Safed in the Galilee. From the fourth century onwards, the land that had been renamed as Palestine by the Romans was under the domination of the Byzantine Empire when the Cardo here was built. This was the main thoroughfare through Byzantine Jerusalem. Jews throughout the empire were regarded as second-class citizens, including in Palestine, which was part of the province of Syria. There's no real Arab connection until the seventh century, maybe a little bit before that with the Nabataeans. But basically what happens is in the seventh century, starting in the just a couple of years after the death of Muhammad in 632, then Arab armies come in and they conquer the whole of Syria. They go on to conquer most of the rest of the known world at the time. The invading Arabs brought with them a new religion, Islam and the Byzantine Empire started to go into decline. By the Middle Ages, a Jewish community had been firmly re-established here in Jerusalem. Historical records show that there were massacres of both Jews and Muslims here during the Crusades. 